Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about why the concept of free will is actually incoherent, um, in the sense that it's, it's logically inconsistent, it's internally inconsistent, it, it really, in a, in a sense, just doesn't make sense. Okay, um, before we do that, I just want to go through briefly um, what we mean when we say that we have a free will. And and what you know what the truth of that is, I guess, and then why why you know this why this is important. So um, the re the reason the reason this is important is because our you know our world is completely deluded about the um, you know the fundamental the fundamental nature of our human will. I mean, um, we're completely deluded about who we are. You know who we are as a humanity, who we are as human beings, as people, and and this has been the case for several thousand years. We've we've structured our entire civilization, our um, criminal justice system, you know, laws, our socioeconomic system, our society, our interpersonal relations, our or even our relationship to ourself. We've, we've structured everything on, on something that's just not true, that, that, that is an illusion. And so I can't help but feel that, you know, for us to be guided by the truth of who we are and the truth of um, why we do what we do has to be a wiser better um, way of conducting ourselves in our, in our world than, than by living this lie, this, this illusion, you know, by living by this illusion that we, we actually have a free will. Okay, so like, the idea is like, when we say we have a free will, um, we generally mean that what we do and think and say and feel is completely up to us. You know, in other words, nothing that's not in our control is either making these decisions for us or taking part in the decisions. Um, and, um, you know, the, 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 when, you, when you look at it, you know, that's impossible. I mean, because, like, if we have an unconscious that's a storehouse for all our words that we draw on when we think things, when we make decisions, when s decisions when we say things, then obviously, you know, we can't have a will that's free of that. I mean, the, the unconscious is actually, you know, part of every decision, every act that we make because it's the storehouse of all our memories. And so, um, naturally, um, if our unconscious is not something we're in control of, because by definition it is unconscious, then, you know, that just, that just very clearly um, demonstrates, you know, why we don't have a free will. And there's other ways, but, but today we'll, we're just going to be exploring, um, again, why the concept of free will is actually incoherent. Um, to have a free will would mean that, um, that our decisions are completely free of, of anything. You know, um, for example, how could, how, could our, how could our decisions be free of um, of our memories um, of what we've done in the past, because I mean, like you know, our, our when we make a decision, whatever the decision is, we have to base that decision on something. Even if it's just like sometimes we say, well, I can just like make a decision, and it's an intuitive decision. I don't think about it. I just make it. But I grant you, you know, when you make a decision like that, when we make a decision like that. There is a reason for it. it. It's happening at the level of the unconscious, but but then let's uh, let's let's just um, explore this. Let's say there was such a thing as reasonless intuition that it's just like you know, you you want to make a decision. You know, you make a decision. It's not based on anything, but that's not you know that wouldn't be a free will decision in the sense that we mean it. Because when we say we have a free will. It's something we, by free will, we mean that it's something we can take pride in, that, that, that we will hold ourselves and other people accountable for. You know, that, that um, you know, and, and a lot of this relates to morality. Um, 
We are ironically hardwired to um, seek to do good. You know, we have this moral imperative, and that's actually a reason why we don't have a free will. But um, and so, like, what happens is we want, you know, that that moral imperative causes us to um, to really take pride in, in what we do that's good. You know, to kind of own it. But um, but again, it's just it's it's um, what's happening is that um, whenever we make a moral decision. Um, if it's not based on something, on, on um, let's say, moral lessons that we've obviously had to have learned, then, um, you know, then, then how could, um, if, it, if it's not based on something, then it would be free, but if it's not based on something, on some kind of moral instruction, whatever, then how could it be? I mean, how, how could we take credit for it? How could we um, say that it's our decision? So um, another, I mean, just the concept of, of free will, um, it's, it's something that um, it kind of like evades, it, it ignores, it, it just um, chooses to, to not consider the very fundamental process in nature. I mean, because again, when we say we have a free will, what we're saying is that um, our free, our will, is actually free of causality. You know, I mean, it it would be, in other words, to say that we have a free will would be to say that what we decide is free of a cause. You know, and then what happens is like, well, every cause has a cause. So like, you know, the cause of our decision would have a cause and that would have a cause and that that's actually you know a way to understand how our wills are not free but again to you know that's why the concept of free will is incoherent because it's just like you can't have things that happen without a cause um but let's say let's say for the sake of discussion for the sake of exploration that you could let's say something happens you know, well, if it's not if it's not causal, there's only one other um, one other choice. There's one other option, and that's that the decision is random or indeterminate. That it has no cause at all; it just happens. But that's not what we mean when we say it's free will. If 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 our decisions are just happening, if we're just making decisions, and you know, there's just no reason for them, no cause; they just happen. That's not a free will. That's not what we mean when we say free will. When, when we say free will, we mean that it's up to us, that, you know, that we can, you know, we're accountable for it. We can take pride in it or, you know, be responsible for it. And obviously, if the decision is like, is uncaused, it's just random, it's not up to us. It's like, you know, by definition, random is like not up to anything. But, um... But yeah, the, the, the reality is that um, everything does have a cause. Okay, um, let's see. <sighs> yeah, um, how did, um, I just want to go a little into how we came up with the, this concept of free will, because at least in the West, we didn't always have it. Um, it's actually a Christian concept although it does have its counterparts in other parts of the world um, that aren't Christian. But um, back in Romans, in Romans, um, Paul writes, the Apostle Paul, um, you know, I want to do what's right, I want to do what's good, but I find that sometimes I can't, you know? And so, like, this is like the first statement in Christianity, probably, that... Um, that, hey, you know, we can't do what we want. That, you know, basically he's questioning whether we have a free will or not. He's, he's saying, wait a minute, if I want to do what's right, if I want to, like, obey God's laws, you know, be moral, and I find that I can't, what's going on? You know, so he begins to question it. And it's not until about 380 A.D. that St. Augustine um, begins to grapple with the question of like, that same question of, well, why, why do we do evil? 
you know, um, what's responsible for the evil we do? And his conclusion was, well, you know, if we define God as all good, then the evil we do has to be up to us. You know, so actually he wrote a book in about 380 AD called De Libro Arbitrero that is translated on free will. He actually coins the term free will to kind of explain how, um, how any evil in the world would have to be up to human beings, couldn't be up to God. Now, in Christianity, that's, that's actually a, um, a point of contention because there's actually a, a, a phrase in Isaiah where God speaking says, you know, I create good, I create evil. So, so St. Augustine apparently was just discounting or, or just ignoring that particular statement. But that was really how the, the idea of free will in Christianity came to be, that, um, that it was an explanation for, for evil in the world. You know, if, if God is all good, then it has to be our fault. And, and you, might, you might kind of like then realize that, you know, as incoherent, as, as illogical as the concept of free will is, its origins within Christianity may explain why it hadn't been challenged until, well, I mean, it had been challenged by philosophers, perhaps since the Greeks, but certainly over the last two, three centuries. But it's especially being challenged now in science, uh, psychology, neuroscience and all, even in the law. But I think the reason it wasn't challenged so much back then, even though it just, when you think about it, it just doesn't make sense, is that, um, well, part of Christianity believes that, like, when we die, we, um, you know, we may, <laughs> we may conceivably go to a place of eternal suffering, eternal damnation and all. And, and according to Christianity, it's not just Christianity, it's like, I mean, in Judaism, there's a bit of this, but not, not nearly as much, and other religions contain this also. But it's the idea that, um, you know, that what we believe will, to a great extent, uh, determine where we go in the afterlife. So naturally, if you have a lot of people, you know, faced with the, the choice of, well, you know, this, 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 this term free will, this concept free will, just doesn't make sense. How could something be free of, of the past, of my memories, of, of how I was raised, of things that I can't control? you know, of causality. Um, they, I think they chose, people chose not to explore that and not to really, you know, have it sink in because of the, this free, fear, uh, fear of, you know, of eternal damnation of hell. You know, they figured, well, might as well, you know, just go along with it, um, you know, to be safe. <laughs> but, um, okay. And so now, again, now, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a world where, um, you know, we're still religious, you know, I think about 80% of us in the United States believe in God, another 10% believe in some other kind of like spiritual presence, not necessarily God. And, um, and in general, you know, we, we are spiritual, but, you know, I think very few of us, for example, believe that um, the first woman um, was taken from the rib of, I shouldn't say very few of us, because actually um, a lot of people do believe that, but a lot still don't that the, the woman was, uh, first woman was taken from the rib of the first man, or that our planet, our world is only 6,000 years old, as, um, as the Bible would, um, would presuppose. Okay, so that's, you know, that's really, that could explain why um, in the past, you know, this concept of free will hasn't been challenged. But now, you know, we're, um, we're living in a world, you know, with the internet, with, with free access to information. I mean, like, you go on the internet and you can, like, um, download these papers by scientists that demonstrate that, like, for example, when we believe we're making a, a decision of our own free will, they can demonstrate scientifically, no, that that decision was made at the level of the unconscious, that that decision was made by a process called priming, where, you know, the experimenters will get you to, uh, to behave in a certain way, to make a certain decision without your even being aware of the manipulation. And, and, you know, to be honest, advertisers do that all the time. When you see the same commercial on TV um, over and over, that's exactly what they're doing. They're, they're, 
they're they're basically they understand that we don't have a free will, you know, to the, to that extent, and they're basically conditioning us to to kind of behave in ways that they that would prefer, which is actually um, a reason why this issue of whether we have a free will or not is important because um, that kind of conditioning is real and and marketers advertisers have have really refined it um, to to a kind of like a an Orwellingly frightening degree I mean they really can make um, many many people you know large portions of the population behave according to um, how they want them to behave in a way that, that it's, um, is really unconscious to, to anyone. And so that what happens if you believe in a free will, you say to yourself, well, no, you can't do that. They, they can't do that because, because um, we have a, a will that can override all of that, right? But when you understand that we don't, when, we, when you understand that like decisions we make, what we do, what we buy or don't buy is really based on the information we have and how it's presented and how we're either conditioned or not, you know, by our media, by ourselves, whatever, then you'll understand how, how it's important, you know, to ourselves and to society to understand that free will is an illusion, to be able to, you know, just kind of um, understand, yeah, to understand, I guess, the forces that would be, um, that kind of like would mold us and guide us to do what we do if we allow them to, you know, that's, that's the thing. All right, so... Um, so again, you know, the, the, the concept of free will, when you think about it, it's, it's internally inconsistent. It, it, it's not logical. Um, if you define the will as volition, you know, is like that part of our, our mind, ourselves, that makes decisions, and you're saying that that part, that volition is free, you know, free of things that it can't control, free of causality, free of our memories, you know, free of, um, free of how we're conditioned. It just, you know, it doesn't make sense because like, again, for, um, essentially the term free will means that, you know, we are doing what we're doing, we're saying what we're saying, thinking what we're thinking, of our own accord, okay? Um, but that kind of implies that, you know, or that would kind of like suggest that, that it would be for no reason. Um, because, again, and again, this is like the way, the reason it, it is, you know, incoherent. It just doesn't make sense. It's because like, as soon as you say, well, I made this decision of my free will because, let's say, because I felt it was the right decision, because I felt it was a good thing to do, because I wanted to be a good person, then you've introduced a cause. You've introduced um, the chain of cause and effect. Because then, once you say you've made a decision because of something, then you have to acknowledge and understand that that cause has a cause. Okay? And um, with cause and effect, you know, for example... Well, a good way to, to understand cause and effect is to look at the state of the entire universe. Okay, let's consider everything that exists um, at this very moment. Okay, it's got to be the complete result of the state of the universe at the previous moment. Okay, I mean everything, you know, every particle, every, every person, every planet, you know, every, every star, everything. Because that's the way the, the universe evolves. It evolves from state to state through time, that like, first you have the universe at one moment, and then through the process of change, you have the state, the universe evolving to its state at the next moment, okay? And that's, you know, it can't but do that. If, in other words, like, if the universe is all there is, the universe is the only explanation for, let's say, the next moment in the universe, you know, it, it, it can, you can only explain one moment in the universe by understanding that the previous moment is the complete cause of it, okay? Because there's nothing else to cause it. You know, literally, the universe means everything. You know, one, I don't know what verse means, but, you know, that's, there's a singularity. There's only one. 
And so that's so what happens is yeah. So if if you if you see it from that perspective, let's say you you make um, what you say is a freely willed decision, and you're making it at a certain moment in time. Okay, um, let's say right now. So if the state of the universe at the previous moment is completely determining the state of the universe at the moment you made the decision, it's obviously determining your decision. Okay. And so then you follow that chain. So that state of the universe prior to your decision was completely determined by the state of the universe at the moment before that. And that state was completely determined by the state of the universe at the moment before that. And that state was, and this, you know, you have a cause and effect chain involving the states of the universe that stretches back before the planet was created, before the sun was created, uh, presumably to the, the time of the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago or so. And what happens beyond that is then anyone's guess, because like the scientists, that's all, you know, we, we can kind of, we think we understand what happened to that date around there. But before then, you know, we would think that there was something else. But obviously, you know, again, you can see that, you know, through understanding that our universe evolves in a moment by moment fashion, you know, according to the state of the universe in the previous moment and all, you understand that, you know, that our wills could not possibly be free from that. Okay. So why is this important? Well, um, you know, we, we've got, um, we're, our world right now is, is facing um, a very, very trying dec um, period of, that, that it's going to last decades. It's, it's basically about climate change. I, I don't tend to get into this in too much detail, um, but I, I'd like to try just to, to explain how, how this relates and why this is important. Okay, uh, there's one there's one uh, scientific body that um, is responsible for compiling and analyzing all the research on climate change, on global warming, and it's called the IPCC, the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change. And it's comprised of over 100 countries, maybe more now, with about 3,000 or more scientists from, from all the countries. And the last report it, it made was in 2007. And if every, anybody saw Al Gore's movie, Inconvenient Truth, you, you have somewhat of an idea of what we're up against. All right, now here's, here's the, um, the challenging part. Back then in 2006, when that um, movie was made, and in 2007, when the IPCC came up with that report, it was, it was presumed that the level of um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that's actually responsible for most of the um, global warming that we have to remain under, you know, in order to avoid catastrophic um, consequences was 450 parts per million. Okay, that's what they determined um, back then. All right, now a few years later, we realized, wait a minute, it's that, that was way too optimistic um, assessment. You know, that the actual level parts per million of, of CO2 in the atmosphere that, that we have to remain under to avoid the most serious consequences is actually 350 parts per million. And, um, and the scary thing about that is that we're already at about 387 parts per million. You know, we're supposed to like be down to 350 by 2050. It's going to be a monumental challenge. Um, as an optimist, I, I would, would expect that we would uh, rise to it, but as a, as a scientist and a thinker, I understand that um, we won't have a chance unless we profoundly, dramatically, and pretty much completely change the nature of our civilization. That's the reality. Um, and, you know, it's, it's actually even more serious than that. I mean, um, back in 2007 when they made that assessment, um, they didn't even consider the, uh, the melting of the ice caps. Um, or the um, the CO2 that's um, that's in the permafrost in the in the um, form of methane that converts to CO2 that um, that as the temperature gets warmer that gets released that um, there's more 
CO2 in this permafrost that it's like in Alaska and Russia and different places that then there's more CO2 in the ground in that than there's in the atmosphere already, you know, over um, that what we've accumulated since the, um, the dawn of the Industrial Revolution around the 1860s or so. So, um, so that's why the reason I think uh, of this question of free will is, is so important. If, if we want to address those challenges, we need to stop competing with each other. We need to stop, you know, just like thinking that we deserve so much, that we, you know, we did something great, so we deserve so much. And, and we need to start working together. You know, we need this, this, you know, there's absolutely no way that we can solve this problem unless we work together. And, and like, this is the kind of problem that if, if like China and India and Brazil and Europe do their part, but we in the United States do our part, that's not going to be enough. Or if, um, or if we do our part and they don't do their part, that's not going to be enough. It's, it's got to be a, a, a um, you know, global effort. So anyway, um, that is one. There are other reasons why I think this issue of free will is very important, but I think that is, that's going to be an, a, a supremely important reason for the next decades, um, two, three decades at least. Anyway, um, I hope you understand why you know, free will is an illusion and why even the term free will is incoherent. It just doesn't make sense when you, when you analyze it as we have. And, um, and I'll, be ta you know, I'll be explaining this in, in other ways and relating this to other kinds of aspects of our lives in, in other episodes. So um, log on, you know, if you want to see this episode, and some others that I've done, log on to causalconsciousness.com or Google Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Okay, so see you next time.